Hello and welcome back to ICS 100. So today we're going to be looking at um, network security and we're actually going to be looking at um, different devices that you know we can use to help provide security within our network. And as well, we're going to look at a little bit about encryption, what it is, and I actually have a little bit of an example to show you um, a little bit about encryption and how it works. So let's jump into the slides and kind of look at um, you know what we're going to be covering to start with. So network security, you know, one of the first things we have to worry about are hackers. You know, this is why we have these specialized devices, you know, because we want to, you know, prevent hackers from gaining access to our networks. And so we have different types of hackers. So, you know, not all hackers are actually bad. Um, so keep that in mind. You have black hat hackers, and these are actually, uh, you know, the bad guys, the ones that we don't, um, you know, we're using our devices to keep out of our network. And as well, we have our white hat hackers. And these guys, you know, they don't um, perform anything malicious. They're doing it more for on like the research side and helping companies secure their network. And then we have gray hat hackers. And, you know, the term gray hat, you know, it's the blend of the black and white hat. And gray hat hackers kind of do it from an educational standpoint. So, you know, you can see that we have hackers, you know, there's different um, types of hackers out there and not all hackers are actually bad. So keep in mind, you know, that use the, um, the word hacking and hackers appropriately because not all hackers are bad. The black hat hackers are the ones that, you know, we need to protect our uh, equipment and our networks from. So how can we do this? How can we protect our networks from the bad hackers? Well. We can use um, specialized devices to do this that will help protect our network. So let's jump back into the slides and start looking at you know, different aspects of how we can protect our network. So you know, we're going to be looking at network security. And you know, as I've kind of already mentioned, this is basically you know, we want to protect our network you know, and different resources that reside on our network from outsiders. You know, we use specialized devices um, to do this, you know, and they can help us with this. So keep that in mind that you know, we're going to be looking at um, pretty quickly here a couple of different, um, you know, specialized devices that we can use that will help protect our network from the outsiders and our resources. You know, you don't want these hackers to gain access to our networks and get, you know, um, like payroll information or, uh, you know, intellectual property that belongs to the company. So we need to use, you know, specialized devices that can help improve the security of our network. And so let's jump in and start looking at the first one, uh, the first device that we can use. So the first device that we can use is a firewall. And, you know, firewalls, these can be hardware or software based. So keep that in mind that, you know, they can even, they can be a device on your network. This would be your hardware firewall, or it could be a piece of software that's running on your desktop computer. So these would be your software based firewalls. And as well, what um, certain firewalls can do is it controls access to the network, so it can either block or permit access to the network. And as well, it has you know, the ability to protect your network from external threats. So our firewalls are smart devices. They, they help us um, protect our resources and networks from these external threats. And here we have a little bit of an image of a firewall. So you can see we have two sides of the firewall and what the firewall is doing is basically limiting what data can travel through it um, and to what information can pass through it to what device as well. So you could go and configure these that allow different items to pass through. So, you know, setting up firewalls, it's a great initial defense of our network because, you know, you can really secure it and, you know, limit what activity is allowed in and out of our network. So, you know, it's a great thing to have and to be able to use within our network. But sometimes, you know, a firewall doesn't catch everything. So we have other devices as well that um, we can use. So let's jump back in and look at other specialized devices that we can use as well to help protect our network. So the next device is an intrusion detection system. And we will always abbreviate this as an IDS. And this works in conjunction with our firewall. And what this does as well, it's looking at traffic coming and going. And, you know, it's analyzing this traffic. It's looking for it. And, you know, it's, what it's looking for is different anomalies that happen in our network. So it's looking for things that it's like, okay, this is not normal traffic that happens on our network. 
So our firewalls aren't smart enough to look for that, but our IDSs are. They can look for you know, different occurrences in our network and actually report it. Or it can look for you know, a tax signature that happens on our network as well. So you know, this device, it helps to you know, work with our firewall to help improve our security. And as well, another device we have is our intrusion prevention system, which we will always abbreviate as an IPS. And this also monitors our network for malicious activity. Though this is a little different than the intrusion detection system because you know, with this one, if any malicious activity is found, the IPS will actually log it and you know, it will attempt to block it. So that's where the prevention comes in. It's trying to block it. It's trying to stop you know, this attack from happening or the malicious activity from happening. And then as well, it will report it. So you can see that you know, with the IDS and IPS, they actually help work with our firewall to add even more security within our network. So you know, we just don't have one single device on our network that kind of like protects it. We have multiple devices that are looking at all the traffic coming and going as well. So you know, it's setting up and protecting our networks is very important. So we don't rely on just one single entity to do this. Um, so as well, we have. Sometimes we have uh, you know, people that work for our company that might need to go on business travel, and they might need to actually go and connect to resources within you know, our network, within the company's network. And there are means of doing this, and we want to make sure that the way they do this is actually a secured way. So let's jump back into the slides and see how we can provide you know, this remote access using a secured connection. So to do this, we would use something called a virtual private network. And we will see this abbreviated as a VPN. And what this does is it actually uses encryption. So all our data gets encrypted so that you know, people can't really see what um, this data says or what it contains. And so you know, when it uses this encryption, it's actually creating a secured connection. So you know, we can make sure that um, you know, only the needed people have access to our VPN. And, you know, what this is doing is it's providing the ability to securely connect to a remote networks. So, you know, we have these, um, you know, companies use these and they provide people, you know, if they go on travel, they can provide them with a VPN so they can remote connect back into their company's network and, you know, use the resources of that company's network. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, and the way VPNs work is they actually use a form of encryption. So another, let's jump back in and look at another device that you know, we can use to help protect our network as well. So another device that we can use is actually called a proxy server. And what this is basically, this is an um, intermediary device. And um, you know, what this is doing is clients are able to send requests to a proxy server. So clients are basically sending this request to the proxy server. And the proxy server is basically either going to like grant the request or it's going to block it. So, you know, the proxy server is kind of like filtering out um, data as well. So, you know, keep that in mind that, you know, the proxy server, it works in conjunction with our network and it can grant um, a request or it can block it. So, you know, it's a way of like, you know, making sure that, you know, we're only viewing content that we're supposed to be viewing. So we could actually say, you know, block YouTube, block Facebook. And if someone on our network was trying to go and view those you know, websites, they would be denied. They wouldn't be allowed to, though, if they went to go and look at, you know, Google, they would be able to view it because, you know, that would be granted. It would be okay to go and see this. So one of the reasons we, uh, you know, we like to use encryption is because, as I said, you know, people can kind of look at our traffic and everything. So let's kind of go and see what this is actually called because there is a term. So let's jump back into the slides. And so, you know, when people go and look at our data, it's actually called packet sniffing. And so a lot of times hackers can do this. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll like just analyze, look at our network traffic and see if they can get anything out of it, such as usernames, passwords, you know. And, you know, as I said, it's the ability to view this network traffic. And, you know, they're using it, as I also mentioned, to gather information such as usernames, passwords, or even just different websites that you will visit. So, you know, packet sniffing, it creates a huge problem because we have all this data that's being sent all, you know, throughout the internet. And we have these hackers that are just able to, like, jump on and start listening to our network traffic and sniffing and gathering our information. 
So, you know, this is one of the reasons we like to use encryption is because, you know, this prevents hackers, you know, from actually reading that data. Like, yeah, they could still packet sniff and view it, but, you know, when they analyze it and they look at it, it's just garbage. They don't know what it means. So let's actually go and look at encryption and, you know, we'll look at a simple encryption example. So let's jump back into the slides. So encryption, you know, we like to use encryption when possible. So make sure that you're using it when available, um, especially if you're using, um, you know, purchasing items. So do not use websites that don't provide encryption um, if you're purchasing items or even logging into a website because you don't want, you know, your user information sent out unencrypted or, you know, anything that needs to remain confidential. Anything that you're doing that you want to make sure remains secret, make sure that you're using encryption. So let's look at a simple example of encryption. So we actually have a very simple um, cipher. It's called the Caesar cipher, and this is what we'll use. And here's a message for you to, to read. And you'll see that, you know, right off the bat, you don't really know what, what that's saying. You know, so you could actually decrypt this. So what does it say? You know, you can actually spend some time and figure it out. Um, you know, so it's not a hard cipher to, de to decrypt. Um, you know, it's very weak. Um, so that's what we call this is an example of weak encryption. And what I did was I basically shifted each letter by nine positions. So what I mean by that is I have a table and you can actually see that the letter, um, the letter A, you, you know, encoded is the letter J. So if we went back to that message, anytime we see a J, you know, we would replace it with an A. And we would be able to go and decipher it using this tool. If we continued out the alphabet, you'd be able to go and figure it out. And in the long run, you would see that the message says, hello, Leeward ICS students. So, you know, there's an example of encryption where, you know, at first we couldn't see what the message said but we could decrypt it and then see what it said. But we needed to know the decoder tool and you know the way we did it in the algorithm. And my algorithm was a very simple one where I just shifted everything by nine positions. So that's an example of weak encryption, but hopefully that helps you understand why we like encryption and um, you know, ways of protecting our network by using encryption. So thanks, and we'll see you next time.